Running hither, thither, and yon, it's Dr. Weasel and Vic Goose, Crusaders of the Lost Plot, and adventurers in at least three illegal dimensions, and seven Wandsworth chip shops. Last time, in an effort to escape his metallic pursuers, the Doctor had randomized the Weasus' navigational control. Yet, after a brief and fragrantly moist stopover on the planet Two Rude Seven, it seemed this had all been in vain. Now, hurtling through the time vortex, can Dr. Weasel come up with another way to evade his pursuers in Part 3 of The Hunt Through Infinity? Do any luck, then? Now, whatsoever so far, the dustbin's time capsule is only four minutes behind us, and they're getting slowly closer, no matter how random I make our course. I don't like the sound of that. I don't like the sound of that one little bit. No, me neither. But Weezith really wasn't built to take this kind of punishment in flight. I guess I better be thankful they don't have any vortex torpedoes. But you told me the Weezith was essentially indestructible and exists in a state of temporal grace. No weapons could ever harm it, you said. Well, no conventional weapons, sure, but uh, some of the ancient Time Weasel enemies had these nifty torpedoes that could shatter the Time Vortex in a localized area. Oh, that just shredders like mozzarella in a blender full of jam. What a colorful and uh, disturbing metaphor. But the units aren't likely to have access to these Vortex torpedoes, are they? Oh, heavens no, we Time Weasels make quite sure the Akindi, uh, the race that invented them, never invented them. We can be pretty darn sneaky like that when we want to. But, uh, those kind of weapons aside, I'm actually more worried about the Weezus' architectural integrity systems. She's at least 400 years overdue to having them all regassed. So you're telling me, because you neglected the Weezus' service plan, that we might be in danger of crashing out of the Vortex? No, I'm trying to say that if I keep making these sharp course corrections, there's a good chance the whole architectural system will collapse and we'll be hurled into the untempered time vortex, shredded into shards of agony, scattered across all of eternity. Doctor, I think I need to use the bathroom. Oh, chin up, Advic. There's life in the old thing yet. Probably. Don't make a liar of me, old thing. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. There's one more thing I've just thought of to try. Hold on to your hat, Advic. What will you hurt? Then just hold on to your kidneys, then. Here goes. With a roaring cacophony, the Weezus was hurled from the time vortex. And we pick up our story some weeks later in the quieter times of 18th century France. Well, I must say, Doctor, I never would have thought that just jamming the sonic toothbrush into the middle of the console like that would have worked so well. Yeah, and uh, now I can be honest with you, neither did I. I guess the sonic vibrations must have successfully masked the Weezus' time signal, so the units are probably still out there somewhere beyond the 52nd century trying to find us. Ha <laughs> ha! Stop, mes petits! Dr. Bellete, Monsieur Lioy, we have arrived at our destination. Oh, thank you, my good man. Uh, we should be dining for a few hours with Madame Pomme de Terre. So, uh, why don't you go off and uh, amuse yourself in whatever ways you see fit? Merci, Doctor. Merci. Ah, uh, my dear gentlemen, my friends, it is enchanting to see you once more. Here, let me take a course on that. I assume you will be keeping your wigs on tonight, may we? <laughs> oh, yes, dear, dear Madame Pomme de Terre. For without our wigs, how would those that pass by know we are truly gentlemen? <laughs> but surely they would know by your bearing, your manners, and your bulging purses. Oh, Lord, guard your wallet, Havik. She's gonna put prices up again. Honestly, no one said living in 18th century France was going to be cheap, but I swear Madame deliberately fleeces us because we're from out of town. Dr. Bellet, you scandalize me with your accusations. For shame! You think I was running a bordello and not an high-class restaurant with many delightful waitresses. Come, let me fetch you some wine while you gentlemen choose from the menu. I thought she did run a bordello out back. She does? Well, 
I've never had a restaurant with waitresses who charge by the half hour. Wow! This place is so getting five stars on TripAdvisor when we're next in the 21st century. Now, let's see what egg dishes look good today. Honestly, Doctor, you and your eggs, you are obsessed. But I will say this, it does rather look like your plan to throw the units off our tail really worked. We've been here a good month and now there's been no sign of them at all. Yes, chalk up another victory for the twin champions, advanced time weasel technology and sudden blinding panic. I mean, careful forethought and planning. Well, anyway, oh, it has to be the souffle, I think, and oh yes, perhaps... Oh, look sharp, Doctor. Madame's coming back with a face like thunder. Oh no! I hope she's not run out of wine. They couldn't run out of wine, could they? Not in France! Dr. Bellet, there are some men here who say they know you, and from their bearing they are not a gentleman. I shall remind you, I do not tolerate the filthy bros in my establishment. Men? Who know me? Oh no, Zavik, it's probably the Comte de Coquevins, heavies, after me for those 2,000 francs I owe him from last week's card game. But Doctor, you paid him off. In those gold doubloons who found down the back of the Weezy's kitchen drawers? All right. So in that case, whoever could it be? Madame Pomme de Terre, dear sweet madame. Can I tell me? What do they want to talk to me about? Oh, why don't you ask them yourselves? They are coming over. Oh, that I should live in such times as to be madly inconvenienced by roguish men in my bordel. Restaurant. Bonjour, Dr. Weasel. We have located you and your companion. Prepare for the obliteration. Not flipping likely. Advic, run. Stop, come back. You have not paid for the wine. I am ruined. Ruined. And so the Doctor and Advic took to their heels, clattering through the streets of Paris. Dodging obliteration blast after obliteration blast, surviving as much through sheer luck as guile until they reached the safety of the Weasdis. Groblox! Triple Groblox on toast! They managed to find us after all that effort and that excessive snail parfait based diet! They kept saying you could have sent that back, no one else was eating it, and anyway, what are we going to do now? If I can read that scanner correctly, they're only three minutes behind us! It's closer than ever! Well, we've tried randomness. We've tried lying low. Neither's worked. And chances are, the next place we'll land, they'll be on top of us in moments. It looks like it's time for Plan C. Run up the white flag and beg for mercy? No, that's Plan D. Um, I'm going to attempt a time run on their vessel. If I can get this just right, they'll be flung outside the space-time continuum into the void. And if you get it wrong? Oh, the weezes will be shattered into a billion, billion, billion tiny weeny weeny pieces. And as the Doctor gambles everything on a time ram, we have to leave our adventure once more. Is this the moment of ultimate weasel triumph, or the day that the Doctor dies? Oh, and I'm big too. You can only find out by tuning into part four of the Hunt Through Infinity next time. Dr. Weasel is a Weasel Television Party's production featuring Randolph Weasel, Dr. Weasel, Quentin Goose, Epic Goose, and Joe Beam Me Up Scott as Madame Omnidaire.